Good morning. Blessings to you on this, the third Sunday in Advent. There is one week until Christmas, just to let you all know. Uh, we are celebrating the, third, the fourth Sunday in Advent next Sunday morning, and then the Christmas Eve will be the following evening, by the way. Uh, just to let you know, if you have not done so already, please fill out the communication cards as in front of you and put beside you. If you are communing with us this morning, please circle your name. Let us know you're communing with us this morning. That would be greatly appreciated. Uh, just to let you know, uh, the prayer list that's in the news and notes Please update anybody you put on that list so we can know and keep our list up to date. Um, sometimes that list gets a little long, so we like to cut it down, and sometimes it has happened in the past. Uh, we don't particularly like to pray for people who've died, so, and that has happened in the past, so please keep the prayer list up to date and let, let Maggie or myself, especially Maggie, know if the, how the person is doing that you put on the prayer list, and that way we continue praying for them. If not, if we not heard, not heard about that person, that person will temporarily go off, and if you want them back on the prayer list, they can go back on again, but we just want to know, we just want a prayer list that is up to date. That's one thing that we're asking for for Christmas, <laughs> just to let you know. Uh, Caroline, this Wednesday at 445, meet in the gym. We're going to leave right at 5 o'clock, maybe a little bit before 5 o'clock to get to the nursing home. We have six different locations we're going to, so please, Caroline, Wednesday, 445, please be there if you'd like to go. Caroline, usually we have a good group for this, so... Have spread some uh, Christmas joy and the love of Jesus in the word of in the in the in the uh, in the in the way of song to people who need to be cheered up and to be lightened up with the the spirit of Christmas and the night and the fact that we have been saved by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at His birth. Midweek Advent worship continues this Wednesday at eleven o'clock. Our theme, resounding psalms, continues. A light lunch will follow in the gym at noon. Uh, next weekend, worship opportunities for you. Uh, Sunday morning, we will worship at our normal time at 10 o'clock. It'll be our fourth Sunday in Advent. And then Christmas Eve offers worship at two different times, at 4 o'clock or at 6 o'clock. You can pick your pick, one or the other, 4 o'clock or 6 o'clock, and that way we will worship our Lord and Savior at His birth. And the last note I have for you is if you have not done so already, or maybe you don't even know about this, but the church offers a mail slot for you, it's in, it's on the right-hand side when you enter the glass doors by the office, okay? There basically is an alphabet there, and look and check your last name, your first letter, your last name, check your slot, see if you have any cards in there, because those cards will be recycled come probably the new year, or maybe even before that. So please check your mail slot, which is right before you get into the church office on the right-hand side. So just let you know. And also, if you'd like to use that mail slot, you may do so. Also, if you'd like to mail cards to members of the congregation here at Trinity, you may use that slot to save on postage, so you don't have to use postage. So use those slots if you'd like to. It's for your benefit and for your benefit receiving and also giving cards as well. With that being said, let us begin our worship with a processional hymn. Please rise. Rejoice, O pilgrim throng. Rejoice, give thanks and sing. Your festal banner wave on high, the cross of Christ your King. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. With voice as full and strong as ocean surging praise, Send forth the sturdy hymns of old, the psalms of ancient days. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. With all the angel choirs, with all the saints on earth, Pour out the strains of joy and bliss to rapture noblest mirth. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. 
yet on and onward still, with hymn and chant and song, through gate and porch and column dial, the hallowed pathways throng. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Lift your standard high, still march in firm array. As pilgrims through the darkness wind, till dawns the golden day. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. At last the march shall end, the wearied one shall rest. The pilgrims find their home at last, Jerusalem the blessed. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Praise him who reigns on high, the Lord whom we adore, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God forevermore. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar in all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together. Before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers. Embolden our witness to the true light that overcomes our darkness. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous praise. 
Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? Good morning. The Old Testament reading is taken today from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prisons to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, to grant those, excuse me, the oil of gladness instead of mourning and the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he, may be, <clears throat> that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress. And as a bride adorns herself, with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but
but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Advent of our King, our prayers must now employ, and we must hymns of welcome sing in strains of holy joy. The everlasting Son, incarnate, deigns to be Himself a servant. Form puts on to set his servants free. O Zion's daughter, rise to meet your lowly king, nor let your faithless heart despise the peace he comes to bring. As judge on clouds of light, he soon will come again, and his true members all unite with him in heaven to reign. Before the dawning day, let sin's dark deeds be gone. The sinful self be put away, the new self now put on. All glory to the Son, who comes to set us free, with Father, Spirit, ever one. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite all the children up for a special message for them. Good morning, everyone. Ah, it's that time of year, isn't it? What, there's one week before Christmas Eve, right? One week? That means, what, seven, eight days tops, and then Christmas Eve, right? And then what happens? You get unwrapped presents? Are you sure about that? Okay. And we celebrate Jesus' birth, right? That's Christmas Eve. That's Christmas, right? We celebrate Christmas. And so how do you know when the days go by? But we have this thing called a calendar, right? And I have a calendar, a special calendar. This is actually a calendar of, of guide dogs for the blind. It has all kinds of dogs in here, especially Labradors. I love Labradors. But if you notice, they're all days, right? They're all blocked off days, right? And today, what day is today? What day is today? What day is today of the week? What day of the week is it? Yeah, Sunday. Okay, that's why I want. I didn't mean to make it too complicated for you. You're right. It is the 17th, okay? But today is Sunday, right? Maybe I should ask the question, what day are you joyful on? Your birthday? Are you happy on your birthday? Okay, what about, what about when you're out of school? No, no, when you're no school. Are you happy about that? Because you're going to be out of school pretty quick, aren't you? Or are you already, already out of school? Okay. So we're, we're happy about that. How about, how about school days? Are we happy about school days that you can see your friends? Uh, not so, some people are yay. Some people are no. What other days are you happy about? What, day, what other days do you rejoice? Are you happy? Or are you joyful about? Are you happy about sick days when you're sick? Why is it you're not joyful about seeing sick? Think about that. Have you, ever been, have you ever been joyful being sick? I don't think I've ever been joyful when I'm sick. Have you? Because you don't feel too good, do you? But you know what? We forget that what happens if you don't have a sick day, if you're never sick? You take being well for granted, don't you? You don't, you don't remember what it was like being sick, do you? And we take that for granted. We think, okay, my happiness shouldn't be wrapped up in how well I'm feeling, right? What should our happiness or joy be wrapped up in? But it actually should be wrapped up in Jesus because he's really our joy. Do you realize this is what's interesting? That a person can be upset and joyful at the same time. Isn't that weird? But it's true. Or think about a woman who is going to give birth to a child. Anxious? Yes. Uh, not looking forward to pain? Yes. Joyful? Yes. Joyful. It's kind of strange, isn't it? We can be joyful, but bad things can be happening to us at the same time. But you know what? Why we're joyful? There's always a reason why we're joyful. We're joyful because you and I are special in God's eyes. You and I are not just beings. We're not just things, right? We're special. God loves each and every one of us. And how do we know that? Because what we're going to be doing today and what you're going to be doing on Christmas Eve and Christmas, and every day, and that is celebrating Jesus, his birth, his life for us, his death and resurrection for us. Because of his death on the cross, he takes away all of our sins, and God loves us and cares for us always, and he has prepared a place for us in heaven. That is something for us to always be joyful about, right? Even on sick days, even on school days, even on bad days, when everything's not, 
just not going your way. We can be happy and joyful because we know who we are, special people of God. Hey, let's all fold our hands. I want you to pray with me. Dear God, help us to always be joyful because you have called us to be your people. You have saved us from our sins and have given us eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. And here is the treasure box. Be joyful about that one thing, and you may go sit down. Pick something, hello. of his love wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love grace mercy and peace be to you from god our father and our lord and savior jesus christ amen the basis of our meditation this morning comes to us from psalm 98 we listen again to the first verse Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for marvelous things he has done. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be? Which invite your heavenly song. Glow. And the song goes on, right? Some of you are singing with me. That's great to see. But it was about 20 years ago. I remember this one Christmas. I had printed that entire song in the worship folder. But I had made a type, typing error. I left an R out of one word. And I didn't realize until after the worship service when someone came out and said, I didn't know dirty laundry could be joyful. I looked, and the R was out of strains. It was joyful stains. <laughs> it reminds us also that even in the hard times, even in the desperate times, because we have been called by Christ, because he has died for us upon the cross, he has forgiven us of our sins and given us everlasting life, that we, even in bad times, should still be joyful. 
But it's this time of year, is it not? That is so hectic. It is so busy that we have our checklist and we check things off as we go down the list and we forget what this season is all about. We forget to rejoice. Instead, we're restless instead of rejoicing. It reminds me of a story I told once of a little three-year-old boy by the name of Billy. Billy went with his mom to her, obst- to her doctor's appointment, and she, Susan, was eight months pregnant. While they were in the doctor's office, Susan grabbed her stomach and gave a strange look. And Bobby was really concerned about this. He said, Mom, are you okay? And he said, yes, I'm fine. It's just your brother, who is going to be coming soon, just kicked me. Bobby said, well, it's probably because he's restless. Why don't you just swallow a toy? (laughs) Rejoice. Rejoice. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done marvelous things. But the last thing on our mind at this time of year, many times because it's so hectic and because of our busyness, the last thing that we want is joy. Instead, we want to just get through the holiday and let it just go by. Instead, the psalm once again calls us to sing a new song to the Lord. And the reason why? Marvelous things he has done. Consider this morning all the marvelous things which he has done. He has placed you upon the face of this earth. You breathe and you move and you live. But not just that only we give him thanks and praise. Spiritually give him thanks and praise because what he has done for us in our Lord and Savior Jesus. Yes, we were dead in our trespasses and our sins. We were blind because we disobeyed God. And we were enemies of him because we rebel each and every day. And what has God done for us? But marvelous things. He still, after all that, Being his enemy, being blind to him, he still loves us. He still has compassion upon us. He still reminds us that we are his through his son, Jesus Christ. Maybe the busyness and the hecticness of this time, we need to focus more upon Jesus. Upon the joy that he brings to each one of us. Because joy is not just an emotion. Joy is a state of being. It's who we are as people of God, called to be His, not just upon the face of this earth, but called to be His forever. And so as we celebrate the coming of our Lord, as we celebrate this Christmas, His coming upon this earth in the past, as we celebrate the coming to us in His Word and also in His sacraments, we are joyful. We rejoice. Yes, we also sing a new song to our Lord because marvelous things he has done for us, his people. If you take a look at Israel, the people of God back in the Old Testament, all the marvelous things that he has done for them. They went into slavery in Egypt. And what did he do for them? But he brought them out with an outstretched arm and a mighty hand and made them walk on dry ground through the Red Sea And the Egyptian army was drowned in that same drowned dead sea, Red Sea. Marvelous, wonderful works God performed for his people. And what do the people respond? But they go after foreign gods. How does God respond? With his grace, with his compassion, with his call to his people to repent. But yet, once again, God restores his people of Israel When they repent of their sins. Time and time again, God restores Israel from his enemies. And even the time when Israel was sent into captivity in Babylon, God came to the rescue rescue, and the people once again could rejoice because he had done marvelous things for them. He still does marvelous things for us. As we see in his son Jesus, 
Not only did he die upon the cross and rise again to give us everlasting life, but even on this very same day today, he still blesses us with his love, with his compassion, and Jesus' forgiveness is just as good back then as it is today, as it will be tomorrow. We rejoice in our God. We sing a new song. But then again, the busyness of this season can sometimes get to us, and we can forget to sing that new song. We can all many, time, many times forget to rejoice in our Lord for what he has done for us. The famous architect, Frank Lloyd Wright, said there was one time in his life he could look back on, and at the time it didn't seem too important, but now looking back, it was an important event. It was a winter day when he was nine years old. He and his no-nonsense uncle were walking across the field. When they got to where they were going, his uncle looked at little Frank and said, Look behind us. Look at my steps, how they go from one point to right here. I know where my goal is. And your steps, they go to the fence, they go to the cattle, they go over there, they go to the woods, and then they come over here. They meander all over the place. May this be a little lesson to you. Frank Lloyd Rev. Frank Lloyd Wright said that was a lesson to him, not to be like his uncle, but not to miss the good things in life, not to overlook the joys that God gives to us. So also we should look for the marvelous things that God has done for us in bad days and in good days. We rejoice because marvelous things he has done for us, his people. For Jesus has died for our sins, has given us everlasting life, and has established for us a relationship that we have now with him. And as we celebrate this Advent and Christmas season, we rejoice. We sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wondrous things for us. At this time, I'd like to invite all those who have been elected as officers in our congregation for the 2024 year. Please come forward this time. Yes, that includes you, John. And not just you, but all those who have been elected as officers of the congregation. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. 
In so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will be devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The apostle Peter also writes in his first epistle, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another, as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks the oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. You have been chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Seely. You are to work with me, your pastor, that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for Christian instruction of young and old, that the erring are admonished, and that the discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of this congregation are properly administered, and that the proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among its members and the community. Show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and in Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. <laughs> to the congregation, beloved Lord, you have heard the promises of the faithfulness of these men and women whom you have selected to serve as officers of this congregation. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you, so that he may be glorified and his work be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, therefore I install you as officers of Trinity Lutheran Church in Seeley, Texas, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty, most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. You may go back to your seat. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift up your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away our sin, giving witness to the light of the world whose coming scatters the darkness of death. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it, gave the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, when he given thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament, my blood, which is shed for you for the mission of all your sins. This do it off you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to the altar of the Lord. Take and eat the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Case, Lord, bless and keep you as grace and peace forever. For Jesus loves you always. Amen. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Go now in the peace of the Lord. Welcome to the altar. Go now in the peace of the Lord.
Now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you, keep you steadfast in the true faith and life everlasting, and the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us rise for prayer. Gracious Lord, your word says to us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We joyfully give you thanks for the blessings offered to us in the body and blood of our Savior. May we go forth to witness to others of the wonders he has done. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Gracious Father, when the time had fully come, you sent your Son into our world to bear our sin and be our Savior. By his suffering and death, by his resurrection and ascension, by his reign at your right hand and promise to come again, we are given joyful hearts and can confidently bring our prayers before your throne of grace. Your kingdom is the eternal kingdom, O God, and we are blessed to witness to all peoples the saving work you have accomplished in Christ, our Lord and King. O sing the Lord a new song. Mighty God, stretch forth your hand and defend your people from all effects of sin and death giving victory over the enemy of darkness by shining into our world the light of your truth. Work in our midst as the mighty fortress of our lives, providing protection to those who labor for the benefit of others and to those who wear the uniform of our land. Bless especially Zach as he serves on the border with the National Guard. Grant wisdom to those who make, minister, and judge our laws and reach into every troubled corner of the world to bestow upon us your mercy and your peace. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Savior of the nations, by our baptism into your death and resurrection, you clothe us with your righteousness and fill us with your spirit. You have enabled our hearts to believe and our mouths to confess your saving name. Lord Jesus, take away from us any fear or doubt, any hesitancy or reluctancy to share with others the hope that is within us. Open doors of opportunity for us to be like John the Baptist, giving faithful testimony to you and preparing the way of your coming kingdom. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Great physician of body and soul, take great care of all those who are suffering from cancer. Bonnie, Joe, Brett, Shannon, Josh, Howard, Gary, Janet, Carol, Doyle, Eva, Kim, Sylvia, Cindy, and Nell. Bless also Gloria with bladder cancer and Kendall with leukemia. Be with those struggling with bone cancer, Rob and Sherry. Give your peace, your strength, and your healing to those with pancreatic cancer, Alan and Cindy. Bless also with healing those with liver cancer, Matt and Wayne. Give your presence to those battling breast cancer, Michelle, Becky, Darlene, Shirley, Trish, and Lenore. For those with brain cancer, give them your healing as well, Robert, Kelly, Dylan, and Lindley Joe. Grant your healing to be upon those suffering from lung cancer, Stephanie, Kathleen, and Patsy. And for those who are dealing with lymphoma, be with Brenda, Carolyn, Lisa, and James. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Comfort your people who are sad and lonely. Warm all troubled hearts with the assurance of your never-failing presence. And bless our shut-ins with your love and support. Be with Joyce and Carrie. O oh, sing the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. We ask for your strength and healing for those in physical pain, mental illness, emotional stress, and broken relationships. Grant wholeness and healing to those who are in need. Bless especially those with upcoming surgeries, Rhonda and Margie. Bless those recovering from surgery, Isabeau, Dennis, Susie, Johnny, and Lisa. Grant your healing to those with healing concerns. Joyce, Mary, Dolores, Sandra, and Greg. For those who are recovering from a stroke, Vernell, Jennifer, Anita, and Caitlin. We continue to pray for Amber needing a lung transplant. Paul, Hilda, Becky with heart issues, and Bob who recovers from a fall. Bless also Bob in hospice care. Jenny with thyroid issues. Gloria with heart problems. Ella, Marianne, Ophelia, Bob, Ashley, and Kimber with liver disease. And we also pray for those dealing with MS, Paulette and Sarah. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all of whom we pray, 
Trust in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated.